Ashley's here to rank 20 of my favorite classiest fragrances. Now I love classy fragrances, masculine, just fragrances that make you feel like a, a man. And so Ashley's put them in her favorites order and we're gonna tell you what they are coming right up. So Ashley, do you like these uh, classy fragrances? Are Definitely, you, yeah? yeah. Do you want your own boyfriend to wear something like this? Absolutely, yeah? definitely. These are all super masculine scents, which I think is really cool. I think what's kind of nice about like classy fragrances is they're there to impress almost as much as they're there to like seduce. Yeah. Kind of, you know, I think sometimes when you're at the club, you know, you want people to notice you, but these are just kind of like very confident fragrances. Well, a lot of them are targeted just to men. Right. So a few of them are uni a unisex targeted. Yeah. But There's a couple in these that I would wear, um, but they're still super masculine, I'd say. Do you, can you wear the, uh, the the ones that are strictly the ones that, the targeted one... to men? Oh, yeah. Yeah? Yeah. I You'll... mean, I, I think the thing is, vetiver a lot of time is a very masculine note. Mm -hmm. I love vetiver, so I yeah, kind of don't I know. care who it's targeted you to. Love vetiver. I really love vetiver. <laughs> <laughs> cool. What's number okay. 20? Number 20 is um, Maison Francis Kirk de Jean Lumiere Noir. Yeah, Lumiere Noir Pour Homme. Okay, Pour Homme. Which uses, uh, utilizes patchouli and rose. Very clean. Yeah, some, I don't find it that clean. I think the rose in this gets a little too sweet for me. Okay. There's something about the balance that feels a little bit off overall. Obviously, Francis Kirk de Jean is a master perfumer. I'm at the beginning of this journey. I think they know a little bit more than I do, but <laughs> for me, it's just not my favorite fragrance. Also, it kind of veers a little bit more feminine to me. Oh. Um, and I usually, I'm not usually here for like a super duper feminine fragrance. Um, and I think that's almost why I, I'm not crazy about it. Okay. Yeah. Makes total sense. Mm -hmm. I find it to be classy. Yeah. Even though it's a rose. I, it it has, definitely has a certain refinement towards it. It just wasn't the most like classic masculine scent to me. Makes total sense. Yes. So next up it's uh, Nikolai yeah. Parfumer Creator and it's New York Intense. Right. This is really nice. There's a fragrance that kind of smells like it later on in the top fragrances. Um, yeah, there, you're right. Which you'll see and we'll refer back to it. There is a cinnamon and clove note in this and I normally really love my spices, but the blend in this particularly strikes me as a bit medicinal. Oh. And, um, Oh, I love this. <laughs> <laughs> but that's the reason that um, it's a little bit lower on the list for me. It's still a really nice fragrance, it's just I can't get past this like tiny medicinal part in it. Mm. It's also very gummy. Mm -hmm. That might be what it is. Okay. Because sometimes with like, it's like a cinnamon clovey, like a spicy gum. Yeah. But to me, I kind of get dentist toothpaste. Oh. So it's just a personal association. For Interesting. Me. Makes total sense. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. 18. Straight Eight. to Heaven, right? Yeah, Straight By to Killian. Heaven from Killian. This is great. I love this fragrance. The only reason it's so low is that there's it's quite boozy, um, in my opinion, and that's what kind of takes it away from the classy element mm. to me because if you're going to wear this to a meeting or a job interview, I think they'd, kind of what you, they'd be wondering what you were doing the night before. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> totally. Yeah. So while it's a beautiful fragrance, I just don't know... Um, if it's the category as well as other fragrances would, but for other situations, I think it's a great go-to fragrance. Now this one is actually unisex targeted. Okay. So I can I can totally see that. Yeah. But here, this one that I sprayed earlier, the the New York Intense, mm -hmm. comes off very butch to me. Like mm. doesn't doesn't there's no like feminine parts about it. Right. So do you agree with I that? I get that. Yeah. Yeah. But can a woman pull? I mean, I guess women can pull this off. I mean, I it, think both spices are, are unisex. It's just. I can't see myself pulling it off, and I, but I can't speak for all women. Okay. Yeah. All right. But it's definitely not one. I don't find it to be feminine at all. I think it's a lot more masculine. Okay. Seventeen is Ormond Demand by yeah. Ormond Jane. I really liked the dry down of this one, but it took me a really long time to get there. Um, now you ranked this one much lower than mm -hmm. the one we ranked for the niche fragrances, Tolu. Oh, I love Tolu. Yeah, Tolu was ranked so high. Yeah. I also really, I, I mean, they're different, but I really love Ormond Jane Woman. Okay. And maybe it was because I, I had really high hopes for it because of how much I love Ormond Jane Woman. Okay. This one's like a warm, grassy scent. And it's nice. It's just kind of nice. And that's 
these are all beautiful fragrances. So it's kind of hard when you're ranking fragrances that are all really good, mm -hmm. you know, because then I'm kind of feel like I'm damning this with faint <laughs> praise. But it's like Sebastian is such a wonderfully curated collection that if it's even making the top 20, it's a fragrance worth looking into. You know? This one's good. I really yeah. love it. And I agree with her grassiness. It's got a dra grassiness about it. Mm -hmm. Little ambery, little grassy, very but very classy. Yes, it's nice. While it might not be as classy as some of the other fragrances, it just feels like more daily wear. It's a really easy wear. It just seems a little bit more casual to me. Okay. Yeah. Makes sense. Maybe that grassiness is adding casuality to it. Yes, I think that's what it is. <laughs> I think of, you know, lying in a field. And so it's not giving me like kind of a buttoned up. When I think classy, I think buttoned up. You know, you're wearing your blazer and that kind of thing. Interesting. Yeah. Um, All right, next up is uh, Bait and Bob Egypt. Egypt. Yeah. This is a really warm, ambery, gorgeous scent. Um, is it weird to say it's like a little too sexy to be classy? Oh. <laughs> yeah. Really? Yeah, and that's kind of... So this is a, a, an actually a barbershop amber. Okay. So it's taking two styles of fragrances, the oriental and the fougere, kind of combining it together. I think that mix is just very appealing Interesting. to me. Interesting, yeah. And um, I think it's a gorgeous scent, but it doesn't... And maybe we have different definitions of classy, but to me it's not like a formal dinner or a meeting, or to me this is more, you know, you're going on a date, it's very warm, it's very inviting. Okay. To good. me, I find that the, the Eight and Bob brand very, mm -hmm. very classy. I mean, totally. I, find, I find Ormond Jane to be a classy mm -hmm. brand as oh, well. Oh, I agree, I agree completely. Yeah. And I think all of these, though, are really classy brands. Like my number 20 was Maison Francis Kirk Dijon. To me, that's a very classy brand as yeah. well. Yeah. All right, next up is Jacques Fat with green water. Yes. So why this one here? This is number 15. To me this is, and I don't know if the color is influencing me, but a very like green cologne. It is a green cologne. It's very classy. It's just not as classy. <laughs> <laughs> this is another one of them that's targeted unisex. Mm -hmm. Originally it was targeted just for men because it was a men's classic cologne. Okay. Yeah. I agree. I think it's classic. There, it has a vintage feel. This is something like a reinvented vintage, okay. right? So it doesn't smell as dated as some other colognes do. It does feel very modern. It just, again, doesn't feel as formal to me as I would okay. like. Yeah. But again, these are, it's good. I get the part about not being formal. Yeah. All right, next up is Creed with uh, geranium. Is yes, it? and geranium. Vetiver, Vetiver geranium is yeah. the name. I normally really struggle with geranium. Um, usually like the end of it gets too herbal for me, right? Cause it has like that minty rose feel and the minty part usually bothers me. But paired with the vetiver here, I think it really rounds it out and it keeps it from getting too herbal. I thought this was super classy. Um, as we're gonna get farther down, I think it's gonna get into more like the woods and spices. I think this is very floral for a men's fragrance. It is floral a little bit, yeah, yeah. you're right. While still retaining its masculinity, which I feel like is quite a feat and um it does it beautifully this is a sleeper from creed nobody talks about well at least i don't hear people no, talking about it i hadn't heard of it yeah yeah and it's a recent pickup i bought a a, a, a tester bottle of it so um yeah. is that the reason it's this shape or will they all come in this shape they all come in that shape okay i really like this shape from creed i think all of the creed bottles are generally very beautiful but i really like this one and it kind of deviates from their yeah. typical bottle shape i think this line or this series was all unisex targeted mm -hmm. at least to me right but this seems more masculine, very masculine. yeah yeah geranium despite it being a floral i do not see it as a feminine floral to me of the florals it's the most masculine floral okay mm -hmm. we do have another geranium oh. fragrance in the list coming up yeah, yeah. All right, next up, it's the king, the hype one. Aventus. Aventus. <laughs> so now we're kind of getting up there. This is the 13th fragrance? Yes, it's cool. the 13th fragrance. The only reason, I think Creed Aventus, as you all know, is very hyped. Um, it's one of the most famous niche fragrances out there. And I think for because of that reason, a lot of people hate it. I still really like it. I think it's a good fragrance. It really straddles the line between like, Classy and clubbing. <laughs> <laughs> so, um... You're right about that. Yeah. yeah. And I think, I don't really know what direction, because it's actually, it's kind of, a, with all the fruity nose, it's a bit of a fun fragrance. Yeah, it is fun. It's a good, it's a good one. That I pineapple. get why it's so popular, right? Yeah, the pineapple does it for me. I'm yes. a big fan of pineapple. It has wide appeal, as I'm sure you all know. All right, next up at number 12, it's the... Declaration for Cartier. By Declaration Parfum from Cartier. Cartier. And I feel like I've ranked this rather low in other videos, 
Um, and it's because, as I've mentioned before, it doesn't necessarily, it's not so my favorite fragrance, but to me it is really classy. Like that cardamom and tino in it, I think is so classy and elegant and um there's there's also that cumin note in here that adds oh. this like layer of sexiness true so it's sexy classy at the same time right yeah i don't know something about this like when i smell it on people it, it has an elegance to it even if it, i You're i right. don't know i don't know it, it's not super sexy to me mm. probably because it's not my it's not a fragrance i would ever wear but it does have a grandeur to it that i think is very cool yeah yeah and classy the, <laughs> the original was created by jean claude elena mm -hmm. this it's, parfum edition is created by mathilde laurent yeah. yeah it's a good one it check is. it out sexy classy to me all right next up is a classic from guerlain yes guerlain abbey rouge abbey rouge which we both said we felt was just shalimar for men shalimar for men <laughs> And that's the story I hear. And that is a classic fragrance. And this is a classic fragrance. Something that's interesting about this is my feelings toward it change so often because sometimes I love the vanilla in it and sometimes it kind of rubs me the wrong way. I think it can verge on cloying depending on the mm -hmm. weather. Yeah. Um, yeah. Be careful if you're wearing the EDP version versus the EDT because EDP is yes. even more vanilla. <laughs> It's vanilla. I get it's a very to me a very almondy vanilla. I don't know if that's from like benzaldehyde or heliotropin, but I get a vanilla almond note with like a lot of citruses, um, and to me more lemon than bergamot. Yeah, and I that's think it's, what, there's lemon. Yeah, there's definitely lemon in there. And that's what differentiates it from sure Shalimar for me. Honestly, I would just prefer people wear Shalimar, whether you're a man or a woman. Shalimar is very unisex I and love very Shalimar. classy. Um, but it ranks high because it is it's a classic men's fragrance and it smells classy Cool, that's yes. number 11 number 11 at number 10 going to the house of Creed Bois de Portugal Bois de Portugal So this one's Frank Sinatra's fragrance. Oh, I didn't know that. You I should love be. Frank Sinatra <laughs> It's really nice and this doesn't feel dated to me at all despite you being, don't think so no, I think it's vintage it smells classic it was launched in the 80s, oh, wow. so it's not that old. Okay, cool. Now, the fragrance that I sprayed on earlier mm -hmm. from uh, Nikolai Parfumer Creator, New York Intense, yes. is kind of similar to this. Definitely. Um, I just think they kind of were, they added more citrus, didn't overdose on the spices. It's definitely, there's still a lot of spices in the fragrance, but it's not as warm. There's, a, it's a little bit more refined, and I think that's why it made our top 10. It doesn't feel as raw as the Parfum de Nicolai fragrance. Now, there's a very citronella-like quality to this. Totally. Yeah? That I think is absent in this. In that, yeah. And that's another reason I'm not a huge citronella fan. You're not? I love no. citronella. <laughs> I, I used to actually use the pure oil. You did? Like, to ward mosquitoes, and okay. I think that association is just never going to leave my brain. All right, I see. I think this is so great. Yeah, this is good, though. Yeah. It's a good creed. Yes. Bois de Portugal, number 10. And number 9... Terre d'Hermes. This is classy, but everyone wears it, and I'm getting a little bored of it. Yeah. <laughs> but it is classy. It's, it's very classy. It deserves to be in the top 10. You will smell classy wearing it. You can, I think, find it for a really good price point. I loved it when I first smelled it. I just smell it so much now. It's overused. It's overused. Yeah. Maybe pick something else. And then plus there's so, <laughs> there's so many flankers of it. Not flankers, yes. but what do you mean? Clones of it. Like people make like their own versions right. of it. So. It's almost, you know, a victim of its own success. You're right. Yeah. But it's good. It's good. All right. Next up, we'll go to another Creed. Royal Oud. I was Royal so Oud. pleasantly surprised by this. Sometimes Oud fragrances scare me because when they get really civity, they're never my thing. This is a good oud. It's so lovely. If it is oud. Very, it's a, more cedar than oud, I think we were saying. Yeah. The oud in it, I think, would actually be like cypriol, which is another kind of wood. Okay. But really good. Sometimes oud, again, gets very raw and animalic, and it's not really classy at all. It can be very sexy, but this has, it shows a lot of restraint. Mm -hmm. um, to the point where... I don't really know how many clean ouds there are, but if there was, this is kind of going in that direction. It's a woody, it's more cedar. I kind of feel weird saying it's like a woody oud because it really, it's like cedar, but it's a dark cedar. And that's where the impression of the oud comes. Uh, I get smoky cedar. Yeah. I love cedar. This way, the, the way cedar smells, it's mm -hmm. beautiful. Yeah. And to me, this one's like a burnt, slightly ashy right. cedar. Smoky. 
there's like different qualities if any of you know it's cedarwood virginia as opposed to like atlas or texas or lighter varieties i feel like that's the cedar that's in this it's just like a very dark smoky cedar and it's they play it beautifully all the supporting notes i feel like really amplify it it keeps it from smelling like a pencil um it's i think the darkness of it adds a sexy element without mm -hmm. being overt and i really like the straddling of those lines that kind of in between so it's classy sexy with but more classy yeah i agree that was that's a good good fragrance all right next up it's a um, another geranium another geranium mm -hmm. this is equipage geranium from hermes so lovely and spicy this to me this is super clove cinnamon yeah. and geranium this is a flanker of the original equipage right uh, to me, it's very peppery. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I got that. Yeah. Very piquant. And um, I think I like this more than the original equipage. And I remember when I first smelled it in Hermes, I felt the same way. Now here, the geranium mm -hmm. smells like there's something else that is coming up on the list. And it kind of hint at each other a little bit. Interesting. We'll talk about it. No, this one. Ah, okay. Yeah, we'll talk about it. Okay. Because when I wear the two... They after each other, they, they start reminding me of one, one another, and the, this other one has geranium as a, yeah. as a dominant note. So. I also love these older Hermes bottles, you know, or I guess the. This is a new one. Oh. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> this just recently came out. This came out in 2015 or 2014. Oh, okay. Yeah. I guess I'm just used to their Hermescence bottles, and I thought of that oh, kind of thing. Yeah. So I just like the shape too. That's yeah. all. All right. So, t number six, Elysium from oh, Roja Parfums. Thank you. So, what do you like about this one? This is considered a fougere. I get that. So, I like the lavender tonka, but I do also like the amber that's like, it's subtle at the bottom. It's clean. Mm hmm. It's. It smells I think it's really good. It's, you think so? Yeah. Is it, or is it not your favorite? Oh, no, I love okay. it. I love it. It's, <laughs> it reminds me of other similar kind of fragrances like. I get that. Blue de Chanel, oh, Aventis. Yes. But. Rose just taking it to a, a new level of classiness. That. It is. Maybe that's what it is, because you know, there's always going to be a harshness to Blue de Chanel. Yeah. Aventus, maybe less so, and this is just like the full rounding out of those fragrances. To me, this is kind of like, you know, Aventus gets the most hype. I, w I feel like this should maybe get a little, it's so smooth. And guys, if you're comparing it to a price of Aventus, this is actually cheaper than Aventus. Huh. It's $300 and Aventus is more than $300. So. so, yeah, I think this is so much nicer. Do that, guys. All right, next up is Boy, Boy. from Chanel. So, I had smelled Boy before, and I honestly hadn't given it much thought, but re-smelling it today, I really loved it. Yeah, it's a modern fougere. It is. Actually, modern, classic. I get a classic Chanel touch in there. Totally. Yeah? I See, I know you were saying that you feel like it alludes to equipage. Yeah, the geranium in here smells like the geranium in equipage. equipage. There's a big, big geranium note in there. But to me, the spice in this is a more toned down version of that in Pour Monsieur. Oh. Mm -hmm. Interesting. The citrus spice quality. I almost feel like this is a little bit more of a modern Pour Monsieur. Okay. Or at least I take some inspiration from it. Which is funny because the next one is <laughs> <laughs> Pour Monsieur, which I think is such an underrated Chanel. Not a lot of people talk about it. It's so gorgeous. Um, it came out in the 50s, I believe. Yep. And this so is an EDT. It's been around for a long time, and it has really stood the test of time. It's, it's a classic. It's classy. Um, I think it's really worth searching out a bottle because... I love Chanel Number no. Five, but before I became a big fan of it, I used to wear this so much more. Really, I really love this fragrance. Wow. Yeah, I think it's super unisex. Uh, I think so. Yeah, it's a sheep, a sheep fragrance. Okay. Yeah. Can you explain what sheep means? Uh, so sheep is usually a blend of oak moss and bergamot, uh -huh. and then sometimes nowadays we'll do it with patchouli as well. Okay. Um, so you get all those things, and then there's also some really nice spices in it as well. Now this version, guys, is not available in stores. Only online, uh, in the USA only. Yeah. There's the EDP version that's available in stores, which is a wider bottle. Okay. But this is available in stores everywhere else. I don't know why they did that, but I brought this back from the UK and I picked it up off the shelves. So anyway, so next up is Fougere Royale from Hubegon. This, I think, has such an interesting story just because this is largely considered the first modern fragrance. Um, it was released in the 19th century. So the first one's obviously not in this bottle, <laughs> but um, so that's really cool because you're kind of wearing like 
the first modern fragrance ever. I'm sure the formulas change, but I still kind of like the stories behind these things. This is a Rodrigo Flores Ruse. Oh, version retake of, it. Uh, of, of uh, it. the original oh, okay. who, who began Fougere Royale. So he, cool. he recreated this in 2010. Yeah. But the original came out in 1860s. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so. And he's another Mexican perfumer, which I think is really cool. Uh, this bottle is gorgeous. I really love the patterning on it. And so for the smell itself, it is such a beautiful Fougere. Green, I also green. get some. It's. Honestly, to me, it's not like so much a true Fougere. It's very woody to me. To me, the carnation is pretty big in here. It's okay. It's a big carnation note. It's no. got a little cloviness to it. But I'm not getting like your typical lavender tonka. No. No, you're it's right. It's a lot woodier to me than your typical fougere. The lavender doesn't stand out as much. Right. The tonka does to me, but not okay. the lavender. It's more floral woody than herbal. And the bergamot is also pretty big. Yeah. And it's gorgeous. Now, do you guys know what fougere means in French? I don't. Fern. Oh, really? Mm -hmm. Oh. Anyway, I learned yeah, that because I, I love fougeres. Yeah. You like fougeres? I like fougeres on men. I have, a, I struggle very much um, wearing them myself, but to me, this is super masculine. Yeah. Yeah. All right, number two, going to the house of Gillan again. Sorry, we don't have a cap for this. That's it's okay. a tester. Heritage. <laughs> heritage or heritage from. Uh, Gaylon. This yeah. is such a classy scent. It's really classy. That's why it's number two, I guess. Yeah. <laughs> what it's do you like about this? Woody, patchouli. patchouli. Yeah, it's a beautiful blend of the two. I kind of want to spray it on. Okay, I'll spray it on too. Ooh. Yeah. It's like sandalwood. Well, yeah, no, I get that. You do? It's like a spicy sandalwood. Yeah. Oh my God, it's so good. It is. Heritage. Now it should have a yellow cap, like the, this cap, but in yellow, as you can see the labels, but um, it doesn't. The patchouli is so refined in it that I feel like you don't see that very often. A lot of times patchouli is like very dirty or very sweet. Here it's very much tempered by the citruses and I think some lavender and tonka. What's giving it the dusty quality? I think the tonka or the coumarin. Coumarin, okay. Mm -hmm. Very interesting. So good. Mixed with the patchouli, because the patchouli, I think, does have a dusty feel to it. Oh, okay. Yeah. It's almost like shavings. You can smell mm -hmm. the shavings. Number one. Yes. What is number one? Raja Parfums Vetiver. Yep, Vetiver Par Homme. Gorgeous. I think there's a lot more going on here than just Vetiver. Yeah. And this is not Vetiver X-Ray, guys. The Vetiver mm. X-Ray got discontinued. Mm -hmm. This is the new Vetiver Par Homme. I think some, I like a, a sharp vetiver I love on Crenoir, but I think that's because vetiver a lot of times either goes sharp or it goes nutty. And I prefer that inkier, sharper feel. Mm. This is very creamy in a way I had not previously experienced vetiver. It's so smooth for a vetiver. I'm not exactly sure what is balancing it out the way that it does. I don't know if you can shed some light on that. So this one to me is very, very woody. There's a big dose of bergamot, but mm -hmm. there's something in here that has like a, almost like, you know how um, weeds or like uh, branches kind of get soggy, mossy, mm, wet? The mossiness. Yeah. I think, and a little bit of sandalwood, but I think the mossiness does give it kind of um, a fuzzier effect, if that makes sense yeah. to you guys. Something more abstract than your usual kind of um, in-your-face vetiver. And it, I think that makes it so beautiful and so classy. Yeah, that's what gives it the classiness also. It's, mm -hmm. it's just beautiful yes. see they're also very very different from the other vetiver if you have the other one you haven't smelled this one definitely check it out it's i think it's one of the best vetivers, vetivers ever. absolutely absolutely yeah like classy mm -hmm. luxury refined yes where you can tell i mean the quality of ingredients is really high but also the skill of the perfumer is really high yeah. to just kind of make this blend and you can see from the bottle it's going to be classy yes <laughs> so it kind of has it on all fronts with this and yeah. that's why it's number one number one wow okay yeah. cool i'm surprised you picked that one as number one. Oh, okay yeah yeah and i'm surprised that the way you laid it out but it totally mm -hmm. makes sense okay i totally okay. go agree with everything you said mm -hmm. With uh, the Maison Francis Christian being a bit on the feminine side. Right. Yeah, you're right. So that's the thing. And if we're going for classic masculine fragrances, it just... You don't want to go feminine. Nice. Yeah. Now, you don't, we... you don't find this one feminine? No, it's targeted. It's, it's unisex targeted. Yeah. I think what makes me able to wear a Poire Monsieur is that it kind of has like a very sweet, vanilla, spicy base. 
really near the end. Like I think it, that's not necessarily, that is not necessarily how it starts out. Um, but to me, the lightness of this, the fact that it never warms up the way that poor Monsieur does is what makes it more masculine to Interesting. me. Interesting. Okay. And then this being featuring the vanilla. Yes. I think does it's it go, very does unisex. Does it go feminine? Okay, it's unisex. Unisex. I think because of, I was saying earlier that I think this has a little bit more lemon than the bergamot in Shalimar. Mm -hmm. It focuses more on the citruses, where Shalimar focuses more on the vanilla. That's what makes it so masculine. Um... But just wear shallow more. <laughs> <laughs> okay. All right, guys. Uh, what do you think of this list? Do you know these fragrances? Have you sampled them? Do you own them? Do you wear them? Do you love them or hate them? Let us know. Put some comments down. Ask us some questions about these fragrances and we'll get a conversation started. Also, if you have any other recommendations for fragrances that are classy and masculine, let us know in the comments yeah. section as well. Otherwise, please like this video. Please share it. Follow me on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram, and I'll be back with more videos very soon. Have a good one. Goodbye. Bye, guys.